four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds. Ten seconds. No, get on the radio. Hold your fire. Hold your fire. It's not a weapon. Alright, alright. Um, how you guys doing? My name's Cheryl. This is the identity proof. Um, right now, there's more than ever uh, an attention to detail about police misconduct. It's something that black people understand inherently. It's something that people, minorities in this country inherently understand. But every time police brutality becomes the topic of discussion, there's a lot of deflection from the pro-police community about mental health issues. There's like um, their jobs are very stressful. Um, the pandemic was really tough on them, even though the thing that killed them the most during the pandemic wasn't people. It was COVID and their inability to wear a mask. But as time goes on, we start to realize that the reason why police are so incompetent isn't because of the officer in itself. It's the system. The system is rotten to the core. We're looking at the LAPD officer who said, who literally said, it's not a gun, bro. And his immediate reaction as other officers, like, okay, and we'll get into it. Let's just get to it. But my name's Cheryl, the side name booth. I'm here to identify with you as to try and identify with each other. Uh, a black male, uh, his name is Jermaine. Jermaine was walking in the back alleys of, and Jermaine is someone who has mental health issues and is documented in their police department as a person who suffers from mental health issues. They have an, a, an, a description of him. They should know about him. It, it's well within his area. It's so There were so many safeguards set up to prevent this from happening, and it still happened. And it happened because cops inherently just don't care. They don't care about the any result that involves them putting just a tiny bit of risk on themselves they can't risk themselves even just a little bit they're public servants but they can't risk they can't risk serving you if it means even of a fraction of a hairline of a chance that they might get hurt but catch this situation right Jermaine has an altercation with a with a, a, a nearby neighbor and once again and I'll say this to the people because I blame the, the the person who called a person witnessed Jermaine in the alleyway, rummaging through trash in the alleyway. And he says, hey, what are you doing? In fact, we I think we got the... We got the video and we got the, the police conversation. This was the item in his hand. Which is it's just too big to be a gun. But whatever, right? Did we not? Uh, I could have swore we had the 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 police dispatch. Oh, maybe that's for the other shooting that we're gonna cover today, which is crazy. So many shootings, not sure which ones the which. But basically, but basically, what happened was uh, a call went out to nine one one dispatcher. The dispatcher gets this information. And they describe this person, and the caller says he has a gun. Now, there's something you have to understand inherently. When you're calling the police on a black person, before you, if if you call yourself an ally, if you're not in imminent danger, put yourself in a situation where is calling the police the best thing for you to do. Because if I was sitting there, and someone was rummaging through my trash, honestly, I'd be probably thinking, man, let me go get this person a burger or something. Hey, let me call, let me call, not 911, but like human services that have to revolve around maybe like healthcare or mental health, home, shelter, 
anybody, a pastor, I'm not calling the police. I'm just not. Barring this person trying to enter my house, I'm not calling the police. Oh, what if he breaks something? Insurance. Uh, what if he gets in? I think I can handle him. And I'm me. So I get that, that feeling. But I'm also black. But I also know calling the police is just a death sentence. It's just a death sentence for black people. It just is. So here we have a situation where they're pursuing this guy, this kid. Where they're pursuing this kid. Hey, take your hands out of your pocket, bro. Take your hands out of your pocket, bro. What? Take your hands out of your pocket. Stop. Get down. Well, like, this person doesn't, like, you, there's no way. There's, and once again, these are all cowards. Because the dude that shot up Uvalde, the person that shot up the 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 past, the, the, the church, and the dude that shot up that grocery store, armed to the teeth. And they took the, and they, and they didn't, and they didn't even test them. When a cop's ego is in jeopardy, they cower out. So immediately, right there, 24 seconds in, they identify that this isn't a gun. We're going to see how long it took for him to get on the radio and tell people who are coming to this crime scene that it's not a gun. It's not a gun. They've identified it's not a gun. He they, he actually shows them it's not a gun. And to his point, so what if someone called on him? They haven't given him an instruction yet to stop, get on the ground. Crazy. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, no, get on the radio, hold your fire, hold your fire, it's not a weapon, no, they have no care in the world about the consequences of their actions, and that's why they can do shit like this. It's not a gun, bro. And that's like the line. That's like the whole thing. It's just like, damn. So wh where was the sense of urgency to stop this? And then when the attempt, in an attempt to be more transparent. Oh, here it is. PR, I got a black guy, dark skin. This was the phone call that took place. In, a, in an attempt to have some type of PR backlash, the... They, they, they do everything they can to prevent from just taking ownership of just bad policing. Attempted to engage them after the after uh, Petit was being charged with. He wanted to know why the LAPD labeled Petit and an assault with a deadly weapon suspect when they knew he wasn't carrying a weapon. He was also wanted wanted to know what charges Petit would be facing once he had recovered. LAPD had made it known that Petit had 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 warrants unrelated to the case, but had not clarified whether the charges he was currently booked on were those warrants or for a case per LSA, uh, LASD inmate locator. There is currently two charges and bail for Petit. Set at a hundred thousand dollars. It's crazy, but Lopez wouldn't give any specific regarding those charges. It might, it might be that he doesn't fall under Southwest purview. Said Lopez is under the force, the force investigation division, meaning the public 
will have to wait until the critical incident briefing is released five weeks from now. Update. Petit was booked for two felony warrants, assault with a deadly weapon and resisting an executive 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 officer. Given Petit was said to have had pending warrants, it's not completely clear if both of these charges are related to present case. Many thanks to William Good for passing this information on. Okay. But for me, like these are this is one of those situations where it's just like there is no way you can really excuse this because there was a complete breakdown. You didn't regardless you when you got the call on him, you didn't know he was a felon then. It's, as far as you're concerned, he's a completely innocent dude just carrying around a car park. He wasn't bothering anyone, he didn't assault anybody, and it's basically the word of one random person saying, I thought I saw a pistol. That's not enough to shoot, like, that can't be enough to kill somebody in these streets. But let's take a closer look at a situation where, like, it's, it's just blatant at this point, right? So, for all y'all that don't know, maybe we have to make this a separate video. We'll see. Let's grab it. 